Hi friends, hello, hello friends. Welcome back, this is Lady Phoenix from our Nurse Prepper channel. And today we're talking about another episode of autism. And today I wanna to get started with touching upon some of the things we were talking about last time. Remember we talked about things of how people can be so rude when it comes to, you know, seeing your kids and how their behaviors are getting in the way of any social situation, whether it be a restaurant or what have you, or even at friends' houses, where today we're gonna to continue this conversation with some more tips and tricks that I have up my sleeve, which I don't have sleeves today. <laughs> I'm sleeveless, but anyway, sleeveless in Seattle. No, just kidding, sleeveless in California. Anywho, so let's get started. So one of the things I want to, I'm glancing down in my list here, um, some of the things you can do, especially as kids get older and you start taking them to parties or they get invited to parties, if they're lucky enough. <laughs> I know for a fact that I was so depressed in the beginning because children can be so mean and rude to our family members. And in the beginning, there wasn't even an invite. So you kind of learn as a parent to kind of get your child invited to parties and things. And there's a lot of work that you have to do as a parent to, for that to be able to happen. Whereas a, what you would call a quote normal, quote unquote normal, um, it's usually a given. You know, people, kids get invited to parties. And that's the sad part when you have a child with Asperger's or autism, you might not get invited to parties as much. So that's one of the things you have to deal with. But when they are lucky enough to overcome that and they make friends or at least one friend which by the way is the most beautiful thing in the world when your child makes a friend and nobody in in the real world will understand this unless you're an autism parent you would totally understand what I just said the fact that you can even cry when your child has one friend is really a really beautiful thing as I say in my other channels, it's so beautiful <laughs> to have a friend, to have your child make a friend. So one of the things I want to give you as a tip is to really focus on priming your children for when they're going to go to the party. So, you know, especially if they're going to attend the party alone, which by that time they seem to be fo functioning really well, I would assume if they're going alone. But in the beginning where you're not ready for that, you want to make sure that you never leave your children unattended. What I mean by this is you could start off with relatives because, well, relatives are your relatives. They're going to have to accept you no matter what. <laughs> so before you move on to friends, right? So when you go to relatives, houses, friends, or neighbors, or what have you, you do not want to leave your kid unatten unattended. Now, this doesn't mean uh, do you want to be hovering over them like a helicopter mom. <laughs> yes, a lot of parents are helicopter parents, and that's a really good thing, by the way. So don't feel bad about it if you are, but you also want to come to the realization that you're not going to be there forever and you have to teach your children these skills that they need to be able to function. So what I mean by that is like, don't leave them unattended, like don't go to the party and then leave your child go on into the world, into the ab abyss with other kids and just, you know, be on their own, like a swim or sing kind of thing. No kind of hover over them but don't let them know that you're doing it you know like walk around like let's say you're taking your child to a uh, birthday party and they're going into the jumper well you want to still interact and mix in you know and mingle with the adults and such but once in a while every I don't know every 10 minutes or so or five minutes how it depends on how your child is uh, you know just walk by the by the jumper and see how your child is doing are they hogging up all the time spent inside the jumper? Are they trying to hit kids, trying to get their attention? You know, things like that. And nip it in the bud right away. So if you see some, if there's, if you see their aggression, you definitely want to remove them, make them safe, make other kids safe. Uh, but do it in a nonchalant kind of way. You know, I would say, like, use distraction. Distraction is one of the best tips I can give you that really works for for anybody, really, not just kids on the spectrum. But, you know, you can say something like, hey, I have something to show you. Let's go, you know. And that would be, like, piquing their interest, and they're really going to come with you 
you might get them to stop whatever behaviors are going on and you're not per se embarrassing them or not that some of them would be embarrassed because not all children will know the um, feeling even of uh, what embarrassment is but they might get angry they might start tantruming and so on so yeah that's one of the things I want um, the tips that worked for us uh, so if their child's not doing their homework at school this is where you really want to speed up the interventions with IEPs the uh, individual educational plans because that's where the accommodations are going to come in especially if the kid is at risk for failing their grade and repeating a grade and such so that's something you want to really get on the ball with that because the sooner you get the help the better it's going to be so anyway that was it for today thank you so much for watching i hope this was insightful for you many blessings remember to be healthy well happy and organized and i'll see you tomorrow